because Pikachu can get out of disadvantage like that. And both those two are going to be hitting quick attack like it's the only move they've got left, let me tell you. Yeah, we're going to be seeing tons of ineffective T-Jolts. I am very, very sure of it. But let's see as we go into Game 1 Classic back on PS2. Yeah. And look at that, four yep. T-Jolts right away. Straight away, straight away. It's nuts. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. It's going to be about... Both of them are going to have similar neutral plans. I mean, Thunder Jolt is such a ridiculous move in neutral on and just in general. But a lot of it is going to be about these conversions. Again, like we said, the disadvantage is going to be something that they're going to be able to pretty easily get out of. So it's going to be about how much bang for your buck can you get? Can you read what options they're going to go for out of disadvantage? And in particular, those quicker chat trajectories. You've really got to have a grasp on whereabouts they're gonna go if you wanna get the most out of your advantage set. And we can just see at the moment, lots and lots of nickels and dimes and a lot of reads need to be had. And look at that, but back air after back air coming up from both competitors. Just to let those of you at home that are a little bit confused, RK is the one in the wizard's hat and JR is the one in that backwards ultra ball colored cap. And look at that again, another back air now connecting for RK. But look at that, just as you said, getting out of disadvantage with those T jolts, both of these players are unable to find really too much of a combo going in on this, but there we go. A grab hit by JR, but unable to clinch out a kill with that forward air. Yeah, just trying to get the dash attack punish there, not quite being enough. RK manages to get a back air and has got JR at the ledge. Another back air manages to send him off stage, trying to go for quite an aggressive read there with the forward smash and JR deciding that it is his turn to play, but doesn't elect to go for an edge guard. That is something that we have seen JR be almost criticized for and also really trying to improve on is his edge guard game. Pikachu being one of the best edge guarders in the business and particularly in a matchup like this, you're going to be going to these really, really high percents. We've got 130 with no kill really in sight bar, something like a dash attack or a smash attack read. So if you can get those edge guards to get those really, really early kills, you're going to be looking so, so good going forward. Oh yeah, no, and exactly, look at that back throw coming out now from RK. Both of these players are trading their positions in the corners, and then look at that, the up throw finally clinching out that kill for RK. But sitting at 134%, look at the dash attack. Oh no, JR is getting so unlucky. First with the late hit of that dash attack, and then getting that single hit of the forward air instead of getting those multi hits. And now it's RK's turn, but there we go, JR using that dash attack to get a reversal. And now it is two stocks apiece, almost neutral percent for our second stock. It's a really interesting situation. Once you're at that 140, 150% as Pikachu against Pikachu, you've almost got the mix up between are they going to go in for the dash attack or are they going to go in for the up throw? Because both of them are going to kill, but of course, if you're trying to shield or grab, you're going to be as good as done. So, really interesting mix up, and it's going to be interesting to see whether they are managing to mix it up and keep it there, or whether they elect for one over the other. But we can just see right now both these players throwing out these short hop aerials, trying to get any kind of combo started. And again, it is just nickels and dimes, little two pieces, five pieces, just really, really, and nobody's really managing to cash in so far, but in the same vein, it's only game one at the moment, Slap. Yeah, no, game one it is indeed. Both of these players, I feel like, what they're trying to do is just trying to get a wrap on how the other plays the character, because everybody plays characters differently. You never see one player play exactly the same as another. So when you're playing a ditto like this, of course, you're just trying to stay there, figure out what your opponent's going to be doing, trying to figure out their bad habits, and then adapt to it later on. This game one right now is just a battle of attrition, as you just want to get in the head of your opponent using the exact same tricks, the exact same character as you, trying to see what you can do differently to clinch it out. And there we go, the smash attack read, as you mentioned earlier, but it's still not killing. Neither of these mice can find a kill. I was going to say, yeah, not managing to get the sweet spot there and the up throw. Yep, just about. It feels like both these players have got that down to an exact science. And the beauty of something in, like, the ditto is that if you see your opponent go for, like, that up throw at 135, right, you can think, oh, okay, that works at 135. I'll keep that in mind and use it against you. And that's exactly what we saw here. Up throw for up throw, both taking a stock. But RK, once again, with a very, very slight lead. But JR, keeping center stage, he is on the hunt. Yeah, on the hunt indeed. And then look at that. That dash attack still not taking the stock. And RK is in the same position that he was last stock. But just that little tiny bit more percent he has compared to last time. But there we go. The kill confirm of that Nair into up smash. And once again, it is basically even as we go into the last stock of game one. We can just see RK trying to get the pressure on the platform. JR just retreating to the left-hand side of the stage, not engaging in any of it. And it is all the Skull Bash and RK going for a lot of these short hop down airs, trying to catch maybe a, a high recovery on the quick attack. Maybe we'll see some conditioning come in. Maybe we'll see RK switch up in following games. But at the moment, it is very much 
working out for him, but JR manages to get a back air, up air, back air, a little string advantage, still going here. RK managing to get back down to stage, but it is still JR with all the advantage. I say that, and RK, oh, oh. you don't want to see that, though. That's not part of the plan. That's not part of the plan at all, and unfortunate, a very unfortunate end to that first game. But like I said before, that first game, is a battle of attrition. You're just looking out for what you can do differently to your opponent, how you can condition them better in the ditto. And as we go straight back to PS2, JR needs to find something. Otherwise, we might be seeing the same old, same old from RK. But who knows as we go into this game two right now, Joycey. Yeah, it's an interesting one because it didn't feel like RK had any particular advantage. It felt like RK was only maybe like half a step ahead the entire time. And I'm beginning to realize that neither of them have like found that early kill yet. Those edge guards and those sort of big conversions that we know Pikachu can get. Oh my goodness, I say that as RK trying to go all the way down, trying to end JR's life just that little bit earlier, but we are gonna see just about managing to keep themselves there. And again, it's so difficult in this matchup because it's such a war of attrition. You've got to win neutral so many times. That an SD like that from JR, it can be mentally draining to think about because you've got to put in so much more work. I hope that JR can sort of keep his mentality going. However, a bit of an optimistic down smash there and RK managing to meet one of his own. But again, they're both sort of these reversals around the sides of the stage. Both of them are really making a lot of money here. You know, and hey, look, if there's one thing I know about JR, that man can play so well under pressure in these moments. And look at this. Now his quick attack gets him straight back on the stage. These players just keep reversing one another over and over again with the T-Jolts coming out and those late hitboxes of the Nair doing reversals like a charm for both players right now. But there we go. RK now just trying to find a little bit, a little bit behind in the percentage. But as we both know, that doesn't really go too far, especially in this matchup. Two peekers. Yeah, both these players electing to play incredibly safe. Of course, with a character like Pikachu, you've just got the ability to throw out lots and lots of safe areas. But we saw a couple of interactions there on the right-hand side. Just that you've got these opportunities to maybe get a punish, but if they, neither of these players are dead certain, they're not going to go for it. I like that attempt there from JR, trying to get the drag down into the grab, but RK just air dodging away and once again tail as old as time here we have got very very high percent the up throw it is going to kill jr with the lead jr i think for the first time with the stock lead in this game and now rk is just trying to claw back what little bit of this game here is lost and there we go no it just doesn't kill neither player can get the kill when it matters at those early percents and even then the dash attack doesn't kill beautiful di there from jr as JR now just trying to get his way back to stage before losing it. But no, RK is able to take that stock before taking too much percent himself. Almost a mirror from game one. Anytime either of these players get a lead, the other player just steals it right back. And that's the thing, right? A lot of optimal Pikachu play is about just making yourself unhittable. You have got those pancaking hitboxes. You have got that mobility. You've got that quick attack. You can be so, so evasive if you want to. And both of these players are just it's almost like they're just playing against themselves. They've both got these sort of two, three pieces. They've both got these disadvantages. They're just straight back out of there. And it's so interesting to see. Neither of them can really hold on to a lead at any point. And it's just one moment there. Quite, a, I would say, risque board smash there. But I love that JR finally getting the drag down, going for these Thunder Jolts instead of going for any kind of down air. And a little bit of a scramble. JR managing to sort of get the benefit of it. Quick attack, RK getting a reversal. We are seeing it again. I'm loving RK's reactions. I like the fact that every now and again, he's really happy to just stop and wait for something. But again, JR with these reads as well, just anticipating the spacing of the quick attack on stage and then just meeting with a dash attack. And then there we go, no punish though. This is again, Taylor's all the time here. I can say this over and over, Slap. <laughs> Yeah, no, I can say it over and over again, too, because the same things are happening. Each player has their own pieces to their own puzzles. You said that, but neither of them can complete it. Both of them are just playing in each other's heads right now, but look at that. RK doing a dash attack, and look at that, that little crouch at the ledge there. Maybe just trying to get in the head of JR as JR finds his own wow. dash attack and gets the final hit of that back air to bring it back to completely neutral. Nil-nil on the percent. One stock apiece again. We are just seeing the same stock every single time. 
It's interesting as well because we mentioned a little bit earlier on about how JR has that almost reluctance sometimes to Edgeguard. For a while he had his in-game tag as Edgeguard just to remind himself <laughs> of something that Pikachu can do. And it shows right there that in those moments it can bring you back from the brink. It can stop that lead getting more and more further away. It was dead, dead even. And again, just both of these players, just these little 10, Ooh. 20% hits. How oh. beautiful tech from RK. I think he was safe anyway. I think it was one of those fake kill screens that sometimes happens when you're like near the ledge and get spiked. But certainly going to be putting a strike, a little bit of fear into RK's heart as he is electing to try and get it into a 2-0 lead. But this is very, very slow. And I've got to bring up, I don't think we're going to see it here, but there is that timeout potential as well. Just over two minutes left on the clock. Yeah, no, and I just want to add to what you were saying earlier about both of these players right now. Basically, what we're seeing from JR specifically are those reads. We're seeing so many, like, so much more reads, like those forward smashes in neutral. JR wants this game, and it's that fear factor in the ditto that you need. You need to get into your opponent's head, and that kill screen definitely adds a little bit of stress to RK, but it also might add a little bit less hope to wow. JR as RK is able to reverse that game on its head, get the dash attack, and get Game two, what a two frame. I, I was gonna say, I don't know whether that was a two frame or maybe JR just not quite guessing the sweet spot angle that he needed, but that was a nuts interaction there. And yeah, it brings RK up to a 2-0 lead, which is still gonna be a really, really difficult mountain for JR to climb. And the, in particular in this matchup, because if you've got other matchups where it's, you know, one hit equals death, even if it's a 3-0, the games go fairly quickly. You can get a couple of hard reads. But again, we I dread to think the number of neutral interactions that these two have had. I mean, just look at this at the moment. You're getting one or two piece combos and then 26%, you're done. However, RK might be making me eat my words a little bit, <laughs> keeping this advantage state going all the way up to 50%. But again, in a game like Ultimate, a game that's so optimized like Ultimate is at the moment, saying that all oh, 50% is like the largest string you can get, it is a slow paced game. And it is gonna have to be, JL's gonna have to have a mentality of steel in order to bring this all the way back if he's able to. Yeah, but I did say that earlier, JR thrives under pressure. You know what's going on. Look at that, the read with the forward smash again trying to come out. JR keeps going for these. He is clutching at straws right now, especially as in this game, he is at the percent deficit. And we know how much the percent deficit goes a long way in games like this, as we've seen from those players beforehand. And look at this, the back is coming up, but a forward smash read of his own coming up from RK. JR had the chance to punish, but grabbed in place instead of dashing forward, maybe a little bit of a miss input. And RK has just stayed in the advantage. Look at that back air come up, but no, it doesn't kill again, Joycey. Yeah, just about missing that down air as well. That has been the RK show all the way through, really holding on to this momentum and making JR sweat. Again, those beautiful mixtures between, oh, oh and just about missing the up smash. That definitely would have killed Pikachu. Very very, very light character trying to go for a DI mix up, but JR trying to get a reaction and just letting RK return to stage safe and sound. And we can see just that rain of thunder jolts and then the dash attack to catch the drop shield. JR at a bit of a deficit here, and RK feels a, a touch more confident. It feels like the two, the, the, the screws have been tightened. That's what I'm trying to say here. The screws have been tightened. It feels like RK is just playing just that little bit more clean. You know, as we saw from last game as well, RK after taking that second stock, doing a little bit of a crouch walk back to the ledge. RK is feeling himself right now. He knows that he has got the lead in this game and he is confident at the moment. But look at that, JR getting a grab, getting that up throw. And JR, even with 41% to his name, he is still in this. As there we go, back air comes out, trying to go for the dash attack, but is unfortunately unable to find anything. Gets that landing hitbox of the back air, so RK cannot get anything out of advantage. And JR is just keeping RK in the corner. But look at that quick attack. Both players have it. It's just so good to get out of disadvantage. And now RK doing a reversal of his own. Ooh, and I like that as well. RK recognizing the sort of pace that's been going on. There's been a lot of short up aerial shield, short up aerial shield. And instead of waiting for JR to go for an option, anticipating that he was just going to keep hold of shield, just did the landing there and then just grabbed him straight away. Just saying, I know that you're scared. I know that you're afraid of the aerials that I'm going to land on you with. And I'm just going to go for the grab because you're going to respect me. And that is a level of conditioning that you're only going to get in these later games where your opponent has sort of learned what to respect and what to challenge. And then you can sort of twist it on their head and say, actually, this thing that you're respecting, I'm ready for it. And again, RK just waiting for an aggressive option from JR, reacting perfectly each and every single time. I love that dash attack 
from there and another edge guard attempt. Oh, and I love that back air as well. Both these players getting these little reversals, but once again, it's two stocks, high percent slap. Where's, we don't know which direction it's going. Well, oh, it looked like it was about to be in JR's favor after a lovely pivot grab and then sending RK off stage. But no, that forward air was just tickling the blast zone. But RK did get back, but RK is still in disadvantage until there we go. The back air sends it straight back to that lovely old neutral that we have seen so many times in this set already as both players are just blasting TJ after TJ at one another. But there we go, the back air from RK sending JR into disadvantage. And look at that. Okay, RK just trying to pressure with these short hop back airs, but there we go. JR finally able to punish one of those forward smashes at ledge, but RK instantly gets that grab, but it doesn't kill Joycey. Yeah, lack of rage there means that that up throw. Again, that 135%, but we were seeing all of these up throws when both of them were a kill percent, and that rage does make all the difference. However, RK yet to take any damage here, so it is going to be down to JR, and there we go. Finally, the up throw, even at 155%, a lack of rage, a little bit of sailing, it does not matter. And once again, the exact mirroring of games one and two where both of these players 0% on their last stock. However, JR has got a hell of a lot more to lose. Yeah, no, but I keep saying it, JR thrives under pressure. And look at this right now, no percent to his name where the RK is sitting at 51. But as soon as I say that, look at these loops. No, JR fell behind RK and RK could not get the re-grab. And now JR gets a grab of his own, gets the re-grab with the nail on the platform, goes for an up air, it doesn't kill, tries to go for that down B, but it doesn't connect. But JR is in the perfect place right now. Low percent against RK who is sitting at 88, Joycey. This is where you want to be if you're JR. There we go, a nice couple of hits there, just trying to get RK on stage. I think JR had the right idea there, trying to cover the quick attack, but RK was just a little bit quick to the draw. And these neutral airs out of shield are something that I've been seeing a lot from RK, just trying to challenge the landing aerials. JR once again being stuck at the side of the stage. This is something that we saw in game two as well, where RK just began to just turn up the jets ever so slightly and began to overtake JR, but it is going to finally be JR that gets a game on the board 2-1 in the set so far. Yet yeah, 2-1, and who knows what else we're going to be seeing. Both players have been so incredibly close that any of the games that we've seen so far could have gone either way. And JR just proving that point right by getting a game up on RK now. JR, as you know, he's placed his chips in, and he can still go all in. He can still get the rest of this, but RK is confident. We know that RK knows what he's doing. He's going for those, you know, crouch walks at ledge. RK is just trying to still get in JR's mental, but JR has that fortitude now. JR knows that he can get a game, and who knows how far JR could go with it. They always say that the first step is the hardest, and the fact that there is a point on the board for JR, and even in that sort of scrambly last stock situation where RK had a pretty significant like deficit, and then was just slowly but surely bringing it back percent after percent after percent, winning neutral four, five, six times in a row. And JR still managing, just being confident in those conversions to be able to get that drag down into up smash. It just goes to show, like you said, JR has got that fortitude to be able to continue in this set. But we are electing over to town and city, going for a little bit of a change here. RK saying, you know what, I'm taking this seriously. We ain't going back to stadium. If I want an advantage, I am going to take every last crumb that I can get in order to secure the W. But of course, every advantage for RK is also an advantage for JR. But as I'm saying this right now, RK using their advantage that they got from this and is going all the way with it, already getting 70% to JR. And he is now still just trying to call this back. But what a drag down into the grab again from RK. And now JR is close to 100%. He is on the ropes at this first stock so far. Yeah, he's got quite a bit to climb as well. And it's going to be an interesting dynamic ride because you've obviously got the changing between having the platforms there and that tri thing. And oh my goodness, JR maybe could have got the stock if that forward would have connected. However, Smash Ultimate being an interesting game, as we like to say, the multi-hits not quite linking as they should. And JR once again stuck there. I love that little quick attack to the side of the platform. Again, just this familiarity with the stage that both of these players are showing, but once again, RK with a slight lead at the moment. Yeah, but look at that, JR using that Nair drag down into the up to as a reversal once again. And now JR again, look at that percent, 123. You should be dead at that point, especially if you're playing Pikachu, but both of these players are playing so testy. Both of them are just chucking out those T-Jolts, getting nickels and dimes, as you say, getting those tiny little threes and five pieces, and look at that! Both players still alive in this first stock. And there we go, JR able to clinch it out with the final hit of that forward air. 
and using those blast zones that Town gives you, you are able to take that stock much earlier than if you're on PS2. I love that little moment there from JR as well, going for that tech chase off the down air, going for the one jab and then retreating. But speaking of, you know, these killing situations, RK once again just holding on to that very, very slight deficit and just saying it is staying at this side. But it does feel like JR has tightened up the screws a little bit like what we saw from RK in those game, in that game two especially. It felt like RK just made things that little bit tighter. The conversions were a little bit cleaner. The disadvantage was a little bit easier. And I feel like JR has gone through the same thing. It may have taken a couple of games for him to get there, but it does feel like on the whole, he is playing a lot cleaner. And look at the percent difference right now, right? It was, RK had a big, big lead right at the start of this. And now it has been the JR show all the way through, as this is probably the most significant lead we've seen across the entirety of the set here, Slap. Get 30% on your second stock while RK is sitting at 0% on that last final stock. And you know what? RK was the one that elected for a stage change, but JR's been the one that's been taking advantage of it with these forward airs off stage, using those closer blast zones to town to get those kills much earlier than if you're on town, uh, if you're on PS2, sorry. We're seeing a little bit more aggression from RK as well, going for these sort of harder reads and throwing out maybe one or two thunder jolts and then just running in. And it feels like JR has just managed to dictate the pace in his favor and he is more than happy to chill. Look at that, he just stood, waited, had the right idea, slightly wrong on the timing and then RK managing to get a bit of a reversal. But once again, they're holding shield a lot. It's obviously Pikachu hasn't got too many conversions off of grabs, particularly at this sort of mid to high percent. So it's way, way easier to just hold on to shield because at worst, you're going to have to get back to stage. And it's Pikachu, you're getting back every single time. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And you know what? Even if you do get a grab, both of these players are getting so, like such little conversions off of their moves as well. They're just getting single hit after single hit after single hit and going straight back to neutral. That a throw is still good damage, especially with how both these players are playing. Seeing it again, RK throwing out another optimistic smash attack. It is something that we're seeing that RK, again, probably not used to having a deficit, as you know, JR probably isn't used to having a lead as well because of how one side, well, evenly the set is. But again, that forward air, that's a, that's a decisive two stock. That is a decisive two stock indeed. JR saying, you know what, you wanted to switch the stage? Fine, let me just do the exact same thing for all three stocks to kill you and show you why you shouldn't have taken me to town. But they're going straight back, RK. Has, like I've said it before, RK, mad confidence. RK knows what he's doing. And you know what? We're going to game five. Who knows what we're going to see? We've seen such a close set until that game four that I believe it could just reset. RK does something completely different. And we're going to be seeing a very close game five, Joycey. First game five of the day for us. It really is. I mean, a lot of these sets have been going all the way down to the wire. There's such a sort of that mid level of talent in the UK. They can just go so back and forth with one another, but it is going to be see if JR can manage to complete the reverse 3-0 or whether those two extra games of data that RK earned is going to be able to sort of manage to clinch out the win here in game five. And we are seeing a strong start at the moment for RK. Again, just waiting, reacting, trying to get the catch on the quick attack there. I think, again, a pretty unorthodox option. We've been seeing not many single quick attacks and certainly not like that. A bit of a missing book from JR and RK just wasn't quite ready for it, but we can just see, yeah, JR electing to approach. And I love the fact that both of them, whenever they whip an aerial, they, they are terrified and they are scurrying. They are scurrying <laughs> to the other side of the stage. They're throwing out the standard jolts and they're like, help me, I am scared. Back to my comfort zone, which is on the left or on the right, but not in the middle. Oh yeah, and look at that. You know, we mentioned before about RK having that lead and then instantly JR flipped the script and turned it straight back onto him last game. That is, that is, sorry, that might be what we are seeing this game as we are seeing JR slowly, but very surely get back into this and tie that percent a little bit ever so closer as RK is trying to keep this lead by T-Jolting on that platform. And there we go, JR able to find a grab, get the four there out of it, and those percents are tied completely now. There we go, RK able to get that forward air off stage, Joycey. I don't think JR has a jump, and yeah, the down air, and I don't think, yeah, Ooh. oh my goodness! Wonderful awareness there from RK. Recognizing the fact that JR didn't have a jump, Managed to catch with the down air, knowing that he had to go for that skull bash and just met him down there again. Just and that was a completely unique situation that we hadn't seen across all five games. And RK is ready for it and securing a bit of a lead. And we are going to see whether he is able to extend it. Get some stuff from JR for not accidentally air dodging out of the multi hits. However, RK just again these aggressive quick attacks are working out so so well for him. And slap this lead is beginning to rise. Yep, perfect awareness, perfect conditioning. 
and perfect gameplay coming out from RK right now as RK is able to find another grab onto JR. That jump being burned again, but JR was able to get back onto stage as now he needs to get this stock now. He needs to stop RK before he can get even more of a lead in this game, trying to get that drag down again, but a trade happens and RK, there we go. RK does go down to that dash attack. Both players, two stocks apiece, but RK still has that lead, getting a short hop Nair out of shield again. Trying to find JR with a grab, but JR is scurrying away, as you mentioned before. And now here we go. JR could get a big conversion off of this. Yeah, we can just see RK getting the sort of reprieve of the right-hand platform, just trying to get away anything that JR is trying to set up. And again, these, this platform is so, so good for both of them because it just relieves that pressure. It just gets rid of that entire edge guard situation. JR with a pretty aggressive quick attack just to get out of dodge. Now we're on the FD variant. No platforms to be seen. You've got to play it honest if you want to get well as honest as Pikachu can be <laughs> in disadvantage. Again, that quick attack has been so, so good for both of these players, either using it there. And oh, I like the idea, but I don't think RK quite had the inputs for it. Going for that ledge trump situation and just sailing over that forward smash and the forward air is not going to connect there. Stunning DI from JR, keeping himself alive. Yeah, JR, as I've said before, clutching at straws in this game right now. He's running away using those two jolts, trying to find that tiny little scrap that will get him back into it. 126%. I think anything will kill JR at the side here. And yes, that forward air does come through. And now JR on the winner's side stock. The crowd is cheering behind us. Let's just get into this. It's so scary as well, right? Because again, JR has not been electing for these sort of more risky edge guards, just electing to go for maybe an aerial off stage. But it means that JR is going to have to just win neutral over and over again. It's going to be another 20, 30% before JR gets that kill. And in the meantime, as well, you've got to deal with these conversions, if not some kind of ridiculous read from RK. Because when you've got the advantage, you can afford to go for that. That ace up the sleeve might be heading its way onto the table as we speak. But a little bit of a shield poke there is going to secure the stock for JR as we go to a last stop. Game five situation, only 50% on JR. Only 50% indeed, but these T-Jolts are racking up pinch by pinch. Tiny little chips of damage being put out. And there we go, the back air connecting for RK. Trying to get a T-Jolt going around that platform, stopping JR from going up there. But now JR goes back to center stage as both plays now back in neutral. But here we go, JR getting a back air into a forward air. Going straight back to neutral, center stage, keeping RK at ledge, limiting his movement options. Just there we go, down tilt, into grab, and it looks like the percent of this game is all wrapped up, Joycey. I was gonna say, JR is turning up the Jets a little bit here, just at the moment where he needs it. Almost giving RK a taste of his own medicine, but a lovely reversal there. The back air landing now, less than two minutes on the clock at the moment. That's gotta be in the back of both players' minds. Both these players just so scared to commit to absolutely anything. A quick attack into the up air. JR with a very, very slight percent lead. But both these players, again, they're just so scared. Those last couple of hits gonna send JR off the side of the stage. Been elected for that skull bash, catching the jump there with the forward air. Slap it is neck and neck at the moment. It is neck and neck indeed is there we go. RK tries to get a grab off of that shield. And now both players, again, just firing those T-Jolts in. It's ever so slightly in RK's favor, but there we go, JR getting a single forward air, sending RK off stage, gets the side dash attack, but it doesn't kill even with that rage. And now JR was just trying to find an aerial off stage there, gets hit by the getup attack. And now both players again electing to use that T-Jolt as they just need to find something. One tiny little hit. There we go. The up throw doesn't kill, Joycey. Town and City's higher blast zones. That's why RK went for it. We've got one minute left on the clock. Both of these players at the moment. Anything is going to kill the up throw. It's going to start killing in 5 to 10%. The forward tilt sending RK back off stage. A rain of thunder jolts keep RK alive. And we can just see the electricity both physically and mentally between both of these players at the moment. 150 apiece. Up throws going to start killing. Held back throw. The double parry and the quick attack in at the moment. But this is getting so, so tense. There we go! Clock. The dash attack! 37 seconds on the clock, and JR clutching it out. Diamonds are made under pressure slap, and JR is a prime example of it. And what a sparkling win to get as well. The reverse 3-0 for our first game. What a set to commentate and what a set to watch. That was beautiful. You could just see slowly but surely JR getting back into that. But you know what? No shade on RK. RK was playing masterfully that entire set, but JR was just able to become a diamond under that pressure. And you know what? 
what a deserving win as well. That was such a tense final game. You could hear the electricity in the crowd. You could mm. see it on the screen and you could feel it in this arena. And now... <laughs> I need to lie down. That's what yeah, we need right you know, now. I need to lie down. That was a. I was not <laughs> expecting that to go all the way down to the wire for that to be so intense in those final moments. But of course, congrats to JR for probably not the round one that he wanted. He probably wanted some of this smooth sailing, or well, round two, I should say. But certainly going to be having that confidence and that momentum. I dread to think who JR's up against next because you've got to deal with that. <laughs> you've got to sit down next to that man who's just on a reverse 3 0. Insanity. So if I'm JR right now, I'm just like. <laughs> yeah, he needs a lie. He 